Welcome to the Afterspin, opinions from thought leaders in our state. I want to ask Linda Coleman and Rick Henderson, UNC President Bill Roper held a press conference this past week and said it was a remarkable privilege to be the interim president. Then, quickly added, he knows the UNC system faces some trials. The last two or three years have been pretty chaotic, in his words, and he says he's working with the Board of Governors and the Chancellors to try to settle things down. First of all, do you agree with his assessment and what suggestions would you make to help settle things down? Linda Coleman. Oh wow, that's a loaded question because yes, the, the system is chaotic right now, especially from what it used to be, uh, the way the Board of, of Governors uh, is, is elected. Uh, there are a lot of issues. Uh, we can't seem to retain uh, some of the, the, the chancellors over there. Uh, we've got to make some changes, but we've got to get a board who is committed to the ideals of higher education, what it means to the state, uh, and what it means to education in general. So we need to have a coming together of, of the board, of the chancellor, and the legislature, we've got to come to a, and as long as these three bodies are split, we're going to continue to have the kinds of problems that we're facing in our education system. I don't think there's any question that Bill Roper <laughs> took a, a, a very controversial assignment when he decided to go over and take this on an interim basis. So, uh, so far as it goes, how would you recommend uh, he settle things down? What needs to happen? Well, I think for one thing, he probably should make it clear whether or not he wants to become the permanent president. He had planned to retire this month as a head of UNC Healthcare before he took the interim president's role at the UNC system. And there's, I mean, there are all sorts of scuttlebutt around that he actually does want to become the permanent president of UNC. I think that should be made clear as quickly as possible so that the system can make some planning going forward about how it's going to operate. But he doesn't want to be just a caretaker. I mean, no, even so, right. I mean, he's got to, he's got to chart out a course. That's so true. And what that, changes think, would you recommend? Well, I think for one thing that, uh, that one thing that the UNC system could do is to do a better job internally of articulating what role the Board of Governors is going to play in the campus environment day to day. What they're going to do as far as advising versus setting policy. There have been, there have been board members who have gotten involved in individual campus activities, which they should not do. That's not their role. And there should be a way of spelling out, basically keeping people in their lanes. What are the lanes? Where are the shoulders and where people should stay in their lanes? Let's be realistic about this. Uh, Bill Roper is an interim uh, he's got, uh, let's assume, some Board of Governors who, as you say, want to be more involved than just in setting policy, want to be involved in operations. Uh, is he going to have enough clout to call them down or call them out? Uh, he, he will have enough clout to call them out if, if he says, I'm going to be here for this amount of time or I'm hoping to become the permanent president. As long as this remains interim and as long as we don't know if there's an ongoing search for a permanent successor, as long as that's in, up in the air, then that's going to allow, I think, uh, trustees and in individual campuses and governors themselves. But Linda, to, uh, a search process for a new UNC president is a couple of year process. So we can pretty well say with some degree of authenticity that He's going to be there a couple of years. At oh, least. absolutely! We just finished our search for a president. Well, Margaret Spelling at, uh, wasn't at, even uh, there Tech. that much longer, uh, right? And it is a it is a very um, it, it is a very comprehensive process, and a lot of thought that has to go into the selection, and uh, a lot of people have to be brought to the table. Uh, not only your educators, but your business people, uh, your public officials, elected officials, community people. Uh, it is a long process. But it's kind of a liberating situation for Roper it, it, to some extent, is it not? I mean, he's already planned to retire. He's, he's reached his retirement level so far as state employees' retirements are concerned. And so he's got two years. Uh, can't it, shouldn't that just be sort of uh, liberating and he can say, well, what the heck, I'm going to do what I think is right and they can like it or not? No, not, not exactly. I don't see it that way. I think that there are so many people who look at it as, uh, you know, what's, what's my next level? What, am, what else am I going to achieve here? What, what further is he going to have? I mean, <laughs> so, so far as it goes after you've been here, where, where, how much up is there up? Right. Yeah. Well, I think that one, but I will give uh, 
President Roper and his predecessor, Margaret Spelling's credit, that their administrations have been much more open and accessible than previous administrations have been. It's still not good. There's still, uh, we had a recent interview with John Bussian, famous First Amendment attorney, who said UNC system is the worst among state agencies and North Carolina is one of the worst states when it comes to transparency, but the UNC system has taken some strides toward providing more transparency in its operations, and that's a good thing, and let's hope Dr. Roper keeps that going. Well, we would talk further about that, but we're just not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching the After Spin. We'll have more video all during the week on ncspin.com.